section 11.4, the F distribution, so that'll be instead of a T curve, a Z curve, or chi square, so the F distribution and one way ANOVA. So this is our um, another hypothesis test. So example one, consider the following investigation. A car magazine wishes to compare the average gas mileage of three similar car models that and each has six models, six vehicles of each model. So we can't use our old tests, and there's a reason. Um, I circled three on purpose. So we can't use the mean t test. That was section nine three, because that means we have only one sample. Um, we have three different car models. So if we had a single car model we could use section 9.3. The pair t-test could maybe be useful for two car models um, if they were paired in some way, um, but we have more than two samples also. And so we can't use either of these tests because now we have three. Three samples and three populations, right? Because each sample goes with a population. Um, we could maybe try to run the two sample test, but it gets complicated. So if we wanted to run a test to see if average gas mileage for the three cars are different, um, we could run three different two sample mean tests, but we don't wanna do three hypothesis tests if we don't have to. So we'd have to compare the first one with the second one, the first one with the third one, and then the second with the third, right? This is just too many tests. There has to be a better way. And there is. So as soon as we have more than two samples, or more than two averages, because these are always looking at averages as well. Um, proportions, right? We already looked at proportions with more than one and more than two. That's when we did chi-square. So for more than two averages, um, we'll use this new test with a very fancy name called analysis of variance, which we just call ANOVA. It's coming from the name. ANOVA for short. So this is a pretty common test, um, probably one of the more common hypothesis tests. So we're gonna add a little bit of vocab before we do one. Um, so factor is one vocab word. It's just, it's gonna be our categorical variable for the different groups. So we'll see that in a second. And then a level is a value in the factor. So let's see those in example two. So I have those in the examples. So in um, the same investigation, a car magazine wishes to compare the average. So we know we're in mean land gas mileage of three similar cars. So because it's more than, because it's three, it's more than two, um, more than two samples, we have to use ANOVA. So ANOVA is averages for more than two samples. And there's six vehicles of each model. So let's see what this means. So what's the factor? So the factor is the different categories that represents the different groups. So in, that, in this case, it would be the three different car models. So the car models are my factor, right? They're categories. A model of a car is a word and not a number. Um, how many levels do we have? That's the three. So our factor is car model and there's three levels. So hopefully that makes sense. And then the total sample size, it's not six or three. We have three groups, right? So levels represent the groups, factors are the description of the group. And then there's six in each group. So this total sample size would be 18. All right, so let's see, um, let's describe ANOVA and then we'll jump into an example. Um, so the next page is gonna have a lot of vocab. I'm just kind of, I'm gonna help you highlight the most important parts. So what is ANOVA? Uh, ANOVA is a very weird test and it's very complicated what's going on behind the scenes, um, but it's a procedure for testing whether or not the means from several groups, right? That's where I'm coming up with the more than two, are equal by comparing the variances, which is sigma squared. That's the square um, of the standard deviation. So that's where it comes up as analysis of variance in a weird way. It's comparing the means by looking at the variance. It's weird. So how does it work? Why is it comparing variation? So ANOVA compares the amount of variation or dispersion or spread, right? How much the groups are spread out between the groups 
and then within the groups. So how much variation between each group and then how much within the group. And that can kind of give us an idea if they're the same or not. Uh, but don't worry, technology is doing all this math for us. So our HO will always be assuming that all of the means are the same. So that could be mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3, and there could be more than three. So you can keep going and going. So however many means you have, there should be three or more, right? Because we had different tests if there's only one or two. But it's just that they're all the same. And same idea we've been talking about, right? Due to random variation in our samples, we would expect the sample means to be a little bit different. Um, but if the differences, so if the differences are small, um, then it's possible that they're equal, right? So the means aren't exactly the same, but it, if we have small differences, then maybe it's just random and they actually are equal. Otherwise, H1 is now we have a big enough difference. So if the difference among the groups is large compared to the um, size of the differences among the groups, then we'll actually say the groups are different. Um, the issue is, is ANOVA doesn't tell us how many are different, it just tells us that there is a difference. Um, so we can't do mu1 doesn't equal mu2 doesn't equal mu3 um, because maybe the second two are still the same and only the first one's different or maybe they're all different or maybe the first two are the same and the last one's different. So it's a little complicated mathematically so we'll just say at least one mean is different because we don't know which one is different. So words are a little easier here. And that's because we don't know which mean is different or how many are different. So that's why words are easier. All right, and so how is it different? I know a lot of vocab, don't worry. When we get into an example, you'll realize you don't necessarily need to know all this information, but just introducing it. So it's gonna use a new curve. It's called the F curve or the F statistic. Um, don't worry, um, StatCrunch or our TI-84 can calculate this. Um, so our p-value is still a p-value, but we're using this new thing called an f-curve, um, but StatCrunch and our calculator will find both of those for us. So the procedure for the f-distribution, um, the requirements are really tricky, so we'll, I'll go over them, but when we do an example, they'll make more sense. So we'll have one categorical variable, that's my groups, and then it has to be a numerical variable, because we're doing means. Um, we have to be random with independent, so random we're used to. Um, independent just means each um, one is different. Um, they're not influencing each other, so we're, each person is independent, um, or each like animal, what, whatever we're sampling is independent. So we'll show you that in the um, example. Um, each sample should have, or each group, should have the same or close standard deviation. So we'll again talk about this in the next example. And then same thing as always, we need a large enough sample or we need normal. So cutoff is 30, again, because we're looking at means. And then here's the test. So it should look similar, right? Step one is HO and H1. Uh, now we just have lots of means. So depending on how many groups you have, that's how many means you have. And then H1, we'll just write in words, at least one is different or does not equal. Step two is alpha, like always. Step three and four. Um, finding the F statistic is very, very complicated mess. Um, it, marries, it measures the variation between groups and within groups, um, but we're gonna have the calculator do it for us. So we're gonna use this new thing called ANOVA, and then we'll do L1, L2, L3, depending on how many lists we have. So I'll show you that in the example, and then StatCrunch can also do this step for us. So we'll see this shortly. And then five and six, nothing has changed, right? Five is reject or do not reject. Step six is write a sentence. So five and six should, one, two, five, and six should all feel the same. Just like this, all the hypothesis tests, right? It's just step three and four that keep changing. So we'll do an example in the next video and make sense of all this. So hopefully you highlighted the important parts and I'll see you back for our example.